Hello again everybody, good morning, good afternoon or good evening. This is another video on exponentials and logs. So again we're going to just explore some of the links between exponentials and logs and we're going to do that through the medium of trying to solve some equations involving logs. So before anything of course I want you to have a look at these warm-up questions one, two, three and four. As ever try them first then only play the video to find the solutions once you've attempted them. So what I'm going to do now is carry on and do the solutions, so check yours against mine. So first of all we have question one, where we need to write 3 to the power x equals 5 as a log and evaluate it, giving your answer to three significant figures. Well evaluate just means solve, so this is a calculator question. What I'm going to do throughout this video, if you will kindly forgive me, is just to keep writing down um, something I used to use to remind myself of how logs relate to each other. So log 10, log base 10 of a thousand is 3 and obviously 10 cubed is a thousand. That's just how I used to remember the link between them. That dash, that sorry, la, yeah the, the slash means and, doesn't mean divide, um, so that's just my shorthand for remembering the links. So anyhow if we have 3 to the x equals 5 we can take log base 3 of 5 and that will tell us what x is, just using this link here. So if we just compute this on the calculator, so get your handy class words to the ready, and press log base 3 of 5, we get this awkward looking number here, give it to 3 sig figs, that becomes 1.46, so therefore x equals 1.46, to three significant figures at least. And again here it says evaluate, so it's just a basically a button bashing exercise, so we can think about the hows and whys in a moment. So evaluate this on a calculator, so if nothing else it's just practicing using this log button here. So it's a fraction, so I'd suggest to press the fraction button first, then log base 5 of 61, scroll along, and plus yet again another log, again base 5 of 5, all divided by 4, and to three significant figures that is going to give us 0 0.889. And again I'm just going to put on here that that's given to three significant figures. So moving on to question two, we need to show that um, this equation can be rewritten in terms of powers as so. And so first of all what we've got here is this equation obviously. So if I just give myself a bit more space and start off by just rewriting what we've got here. So x equals log base 5 61 plus log base 5 of 5 all over 4. So we can multiply both sides by 4, that gives us 4x equals log base 5 of 61 plus log base 5 of 5. Now if you have a look at log base 5 of 5 and just remind yourself for a second that the log of a particular base of a value is a power to which we need to raise the base 2 to get this number. And so 5 to what power gives us 5? This is obviously going to be 1. This is a special case of log base a of a will always equal 1. And so log base 5 of 5 is going to be equal to 1. So we can now rearrange this, subtract 1 from both sides, we get 4x minus 1 equals log base 5 of 61. And now what we can do is exponentiate both sides. And again, I'm just going to remind myself here, and hopefully you can see the link. So if I had log base 10 of 1000, that would be 3. And of course, 10 cubed 
is 1000. So just let's compare how these numbers here relate to these numbers if we were to do something to the power of it. And so log base 10, and so the base here is 5. So therefore 5. And then here the power of 1000 relates here to the 4x minus 1. And so 5 to the power of 4x minus 1 That's going to equal 61, which is what we wanted to prove all along. So in terms of trying to see how it links, it's just a case of the values rearranging, if you like. And so here, log the base. So the base here was 5. That base becomes a 10 here which relates to this 5. Uh, the 61 here related to the 1,000. By the way, you don't need to worry about colouring it in and trying to show you the link. So this 1,000 here related to the 61 over here. That moves to the end, which is what we had here. And the value, the 4x minus 1, relates here to the 3. That now becomes a power there. So once you get used to how the numbers and the values rearrange within the same equation, it just becomes a useful shorthand for solving the questions a bit quicker. So that's why I'm just trying to illustrate how these numbers and values just move around within the same equation. Moving on to question three. And to sketch the graph of this function, f of x equals 3 minus e to the minus x. And the challenge here is we need to label all points of intersection with the coordinate axes and any asymptotes. And so what I'm going to do here, first of all, is just give myself um, two axes with which to actually sketch the graph. And so there's my y and here's the x. So let's think about this. Okay, first of all, what I'd suggest is think about what's going to happen when x is equal to zero. So when x equals 0, f of x, which is our y, is going to be 3 minus e to the 0. Anything to power 0 is going to equal 1. And so that's the same as 3 minus 1, which is 2. So we've now established the y-axis intercept. And so it's going to cross the axis at 2. So I'm going to label this here as 2. Now what we can do is also think about when it crosses the y-axis. So let's think about what happens when y equals 0. So we get a few critical points and that helps form the basis of our sketch. So when y equals 0, this thing here is going to equal 0. So 3 minus e to the minus x equals 0. Let's rearrange this and solve. So we have 3 equals e to the minus x. And so if we take logs of this, then what we have here is log base e of 3, that's going to equal minus x. So if we just work this out here, what is log base e of 3? Log base e, I'll show you a quick way of doing this later on, of course. Log alpha e of 3. So minus x equals 1.098, so 1.10 to 3 sig fix. So... 1.10 equals minus x, therefore x equals minus 1.10. And so we now know the x-axis intercept. 
So it crosses at minus 1.10. So we could do a thinking about what happens as x goes really small and x goes really big. So let's just consider this here. So what happens when x goes down to uh, infinity? So negative infinity rather. So as x gets really, really small, what's going to happen to y? So we can use our calculator to cheat a bit. So let's just type in this expression and set x as being really big. So 3 minus alpha e to the power, let's go for minus, I don't know, 1000. That's pretty huge. So then we get that y um, goes very close to 3. Hold on, I think I've just messed this up. Yes. So remember, it's minus x. Apologies. So 3 minus alpha e to the power of minus whatever x happens to be. And so as x is very, very small, if x were, say, minus 1,000, this would be minus, minus 1,000. Math error, that's just blown up. Let's try minus 100. Absolutely hugely negative. And so as x goes towards minus infinity, y is going to become, going to tend to minus infinity as well. y is going to be absolutely hugely massive. So I shouldn't say y equals, because you can never have a value that is equal to infinity, but you can have a value that goes towards the direction of an infinity. So essentially it's going to go whoosh, right down here. Also let's think about as x goes towards positive infinity. So as x goes towards positive infinity, let's think about this. So y equals 3 minus e to the minus whatever x is. So as x goes big, let's say 100, then we get 3. Now it's been rounded, it won't be exactly 3, but we can say for definite that y is going to go towards 3. And so it's going to be an asymptote where y is equal to 3. So asymptote at y equals 3. So let's just draw this in. That would seem a bit high, so let's just lower that. If that's 2, that looks like that before, so something like that. Now we can finally just go forward and do the sketch. So that's y equals 3. So it's going to be something like this. Forgive me if I make a pig zero of it. I'm absolutely awful at sketching curves. If you know me by now, you'll know that very well. Through it to Ugh, pretty horrible. But that will show the examiner what my intention or your intention is. That will do. It goes a bit wonky here, as you can see, but it goes close and close to three. As x gets smaller, the graph just goes off a cliff massively downwards. So let's move on to question four now, the calculus corner. So we have this curve y, which is given by these, this horrible looking equation here. We need to find dy by dx. We need to differentiate it. So what I'm going to suggest we need to do first is to expand out these brackets. So we're going to have that y equals e to the power 2x times 2. So 2e to the 2x. e to the 2x multiplied by minus e to the minus x. When we multiply indices with the same base, we add the powers. So 2x plus a minus x, that's going to be e to the x a positive times a negative, that's going to give us a negative. So it's negative e to the x minus 1 times 2, that's going to give me minus 2, and minus 1 times minus e to the minus x. Minus times a minus is going to give us a positive e to the minus x. So now we can differentiate this term by term to get what dy by dx is. So this term here 
if we differentiate um, a power of e, the coefficient of the x drops down to the front and multiplies this coefficient. So this 2 is going to come to the front and multiply this 2. So that's going to give us 4e to the 2x. The actual power of e will never change. This one here, e to the x differentiates to itself, if you remember from the other lesson. So this here becomes just the same thing. So that's just minus e to the x. Any constant term when you differentiate disappears. And this here, that's an x multiplied by minus 1. So the minus 1 comes to the front. So then we have minus e to the minus x. And that's the warm-up exercise complete. So there we go. So moving on. Let's solve some equations involving logs now. And so we've got here an equation to solve, and we're asked to give our answers to three sig figs. Now, it doesn't look like it right now, but this is actually something very similar to what we did near the beginning of the year, which is, can you think about it? Can you think what it might be? It's a hidden quadratic in terms of powers. I'm going to show you why now. So I want you to compare this thing here to this thing. So how does 3 to the power 2x compare to 3 to the x? Well, I could rewrite it. 3 to the 2x is the same as 3 to the x squared. Remember, laws of indices, power of a power, we multiply the powers. So this power would be x times 2, which is the same as this thing here. Minus 6 lots of 3x plus 5 equals 0. And so if I replace this awkward looking thing here with a substitution, this will look like a quadratic. So I'm going to suggest we call big X, let big X equal 3 to the power X. Then what we'd have is big X squared minus 6 lots of big X plus 5 equals zero. That looks much nicer to deal with, doesn't it? So we can solve this fairly simply, in terms of big X at least. So what two numbers multiply together to give us five, but when we add them give us negative six? Well, that's going to be a minus five and a minus one. So X minus five, X minus one equals zero. So therefore we've got that either big X equals one or that big X equals 5. But of course, this equation wasn't in terms of big X, that was a figment of our imaginations, just to make this simpler and easier to deal with. So we need to put it back into the variable which the initial equation was asked in, which was little x. So obviously we've got here what big X needs to equal. So if we remind ourselves now that big X was 3 to the power X, so that means that either 3 to the power X is equal to 1, or that 3 to the power x equals 5. Now again, I'm just going to remind myself that log base 10 of 1000 is 3, and that 10 cubed is 1000. If you don't want to do this, by all means, don't. This is just what I used to do when I was your age, to remind myself of how the numbers in logs relate to each other. So here, if I've got the power and a base 3, and so what I can do here is keep the same base, base 10, so base, in this case, 3, so log base 3 of 1, in this case, log base 3 of 1, equals x, or it might be that log base 3 of 5 equals x. So if we just compute these, we can get our two solutions. So log base 3 of 1, well, log of any base to 1 is always going to be 0. 
That's one of the special cases from last lesson. So x equals 0 would be a trivial solution to this equation. Or we could have that x is equal to whatever log base 3 of 5 is. So let's find out. So log base 3 of 5, that gives us 1.46. And those are our two solutions to this equation. The first one's fairly obvious to see, x equals 0. So 3 to the power 0 is just 3. Um, minus 6 lots of um, 3 to the power 0. Sorry, 3 to the power 0 is also going to be 1. What am I thinking of? Minus 6 lots of 1, that gives us minus 5. And plus 5 is 0. Let's try another one. Question two, solve this equation. Again, given the answers to three sig figs. So we need to just untangle this into something a bit more familiar. So this here, we've got a constant of plus one. So first of all, what we're gonna do is just rewrite this two to the power two x as two to the one multiplied by two to the two x. Remember, if that's a one, when we multiply entities of the same base, we have the powers. So this is the same as this thing here. So I'll just colour code that in case you're wondering where it comes from. Then we have plus nine lots of two to the power x equals five. And again, we can rewrite two to the power two x as two to the x squared and plus 9 to the 2x. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides as well. Minus 5 equals 0. So now we can make another substitution. If we just say now let the big x equals 2 to the power x, then what we'd have just making this substitution here. The equation now becomes something much more simple to solve. 2 times x squared. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Computer's getting a bit slow, so forgive me. So then we have 2 to the power of big x squared plus 9 big x minus 5 equals 0. So now we can partition this and solve it. So what we need to do here, using the AC method, is multiply the A and the C. So 2 times minus 5 is minus 10. So we need to think now of two numbers which multiply to give us minus 10, but when we add them together, give us positive 9. Well, that would be... a positive 10 and negative 1. I'm going to remind you in a second of a little calculator cheat which you can just do straight away to solve quadratics. But first of all we have this. So now we can partially factorise both bits of these four terms. So this bit here that has a common factor of 2 and an x. So we have 2x, then brackets, x plus 5. And over here we have minus 1 lots of x plus 5. And that equals 0. So put these two bits into brackets themselves. We have 2x minus 1. x plus 5 equals 0. So now we can solve it. Equate both brackets equal to 0. So we have that big x is equal to a half or big x is equal to minus 5. Get it back in terms of little x. So big x is 2 to the power x. So therefore 2 to the power x 
equals a half, or 2 to the power x equals minus 5. Now, we need to remember, with logs or powers, in fact, if we've got a positive base, there's no way that we can have a positive number to any power giving us a negative value. And so what we need to do now is to have a sense to reject this one here. That just isn't going to happen. So we're going to have one solution and one solution only for this one. So we could use logs to solve it. Or I'm hoping that you could actually just see what this is going to be using whole numbers. And so 2 to what power gives us 1 over 2? That's going to be to the power minus 1. So therefore, the only solution is x to the power minus 1. Sorry, x equals minus 1. In terms of solving this in terms of logs, what we could do is do that x equals log base 2 of a half. So just putting that in a little bubble here. So if you tried it using logs, which you wouldn't need to do, but you could do if you wanted. So log base 2 of a half, of course, will give you minus 1. And I did mention as well about using a calculator to get you to that stage quicker by solving the quadratic on a calculator. So just a little reminder, if you were to press menu on your calculator, toggle along until you get here, option A, which is equation, press equals, polynomial, so press option 2, a quadratic is degree 2, the highest power of x is a 2. Here we had two lots of big x squared, so type in coefficient here is 2, next coefficient 9, then minus 5, press equals, you'd get that the first value of big x we needed was a half, and the second one is minus 5. So just a little reminder to know how to use your calculator to its full potential. It can always save you time in the exam. And even if you can't use your calculator to show you working, you can always, always use your calculator to double check yourself. So next and final worked example, worked example 3, which has different parts a, b and c. So solve 3 to the power of x equals 5. So again, I'm just going to do my little um, reminder. Log base 10 of a thousand equals 3, and of course 10 to the power 3 equals a thousand. So use that if you need, maybe you don't need to, that's great if you don't. So if you take logs of this here, so log base 3 of 5. That's what x is going to be. So essentially, keep the base the same, and you swap around the power and the answer. So the answer goes here next to the log. The power goes on the other side of the equals. A bit of a simplistic way of thinking about it, but it does work if you set it out in this way. So what is log base 3 of 5? Maybe you remember doing this earlier in the exercise. So I go back to normal mode. Log base 3 of 5. Dum 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 equals 1.46 to three sig figs. So that's part A done. X equals 1.46. Fair enough. Part B. This is going back to the warm up now. And so again, we can use uh, logs. And so keep the base as 5. So log base 5 of 61. That'll equal 4x minus 1. So now we can solve this by rearranging. Add one to both sides. We get that 4x equals 1 plus log base 5 of 61. Then divide through by 4. So x is going to be 1 plus log base 5 of 61, all divided by 4, which we can now compute. So if you want to go back to the warm-up and see how this links in, it's just linking powers and logs together. So if we type this in now and work out what the solution is, well, 
get the calculator to work out what the solution is rather. 1 plus log base 5 of 61, all of that divided by 4, to 3 sig figs, we get 0 0.889, just as we did earlier in the warm-up exercise. And we're going to move on to the last one now, before you try some of these yourselves. So the last one, 3 part C, we need to solve 3 to the power x equals 2 to the power x plus 1. This is slightly harder, but still solvable, obviously. So I want to rewrite this as 3 to the power x, and then we can partition this power of 2 into 2 to the power 1, multiplied by 2 to the x. Now we've got the same power for both the 3 and the 2. So what we can do now is divide both sides through by 2 to the power x. So that gives us 3 to the x all over 2 to the x equals 2. Now we could put this all to one exponent so if you remember the laws of indices from earlier on in the year, this is the same as 3 over 2, all to the power x. So even though this is an awkward looking number, it's not a, it doesn't have to always be a whole number, we can still apply logs to help solve this. And so the base here is 3 over 2. And so if we do log base 3 over 2, or 1.5 if you'd like, log base 3 over 2 of 2, that will equal x. So therefore, log base 3 over 2 of 2 equals x. So now it's just a case of working out what x will equal by computing this on the calculator. So, log base 3 over 2 Again, you could just put 1.5. I'm just showing you, you can use your calculator exactly as it appears in the question. Log base 3 over 2 of 2, that gives us an answer of 1.71 to 3 sig figs. So the take home point of this exercise, I want you to remember is we can link it back to prior knowledge often in this case, going back to hidden quadratic equations. Really importantly now, as ever, you try and these yourselves. So the suggested exercises for you today, I'd like you to go to page 325 in the uh, blue algebra book, exercise 14F, and try all the questions here. Put particular emphasis on the E questions as ever, with uh, the exam type questions. Also P for practice are very useful to do. So try those, leave me a comment in the comment section if you're stuck or struggling, or email me back saying what you're stuck on, and I'll do my best to get to you and answer any questions you might have. So stay tuned for the next video. Until then, keep working hard, keep checking emails, keep checking Padlet, etc. Be in touch, and you'll hear from me soon. Thanks for listening.